think I might have made the coolest aquarium filter ever. At least, it's the coolest to me. Before I was a full-time fish tank nerd, I used to be a scientist. And before that, I was a graduate student. I worked in a bunch of labs cleaning dishes and doing things like that to make some spare money. And sometimes during this job, I would come across beakers that had a little crack in them or flasks that were damaged that had to get thrown away. And instead of throwing them away, I would sometimes keep them. I know, I know, but some of these pieces were just too awesome to just throw away. Some of the ones I kept were these awesome flasks that had little chunks taken out of the bottom. It was like a stir bar went too crazy and it flew through the side or something. I don't know, I never saw it actually happen, but I'm glad that it did because I saw a huge opportunity here to make a really cool fish tank filter one day. Here we have a flask filter, essentially a trickle filter above the aquarium. Let's get into how we put it all together. I somehow also managed to come across these really cool scientific stands and clamps that hold beakers and different things and Thank goodness I was able to keep all of this stuff for this long amount of time. They've just been sitting in the garage or, you know, floating about with me for probably, yeah, I mean like the last 10 years. But they're just super awesome and when we were setting up this tank, I realized we had a little bit of room behind it and we could finally use some of this stuff. So it all starts with this awesome stand that I put behind the tank and that way we can hook everything else up to it. It's going to serve as the perfect thing for what we want to do here. I also have this other thing, I don't know what it is, but it can hold liquid. So we're either gonna fill it with water or maybe fertilizer, it has this little adjustment knob here to where we can drip stuff out of it. I think that might be pretty cool. And then the last thing we have on here is this old flask that I turned a long time ago into a CO2 bubble checker. And with the cool stand display thing we have, we can hoist that up and display it above the aquarium instead of just having it sitting right next to it. I think that's gonna be pretty sweet. Now with all this stuff above and kind of in the way of the aquarium, we don't have a lot of room for a traditional light fixture. So instead of using the twin star that we were using, I went out to the garage and I found an old Kessel light that I had that I thought might work perfectly and we could attach it somehow to the stand. So that's the setup right now with the light and I'm not sure if it's gonna stay this way. It's kind of hard even with it at max power, it's not getting a ton of light down to the aquarium, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but because we kind of have to use CO2 in this example, we might wanna have a little bit more light. So we could swap the light out, we could use a Kessel that's just a stronger version of one, or maybe we could even take the Twin Star or a different, you know, traditional looking light fixture and clamp that above the aquarium, provide even more light around the aquarium. Maybe that's gonna be better for the plants and the other things that we could do here. I haven't decided yet. Let's get back to the filter itself though. So, turns out I have two of these flasks. One was actually set up as a trickle filter a super long time ago. I think I may, might have made a video on it like nine years ago, um, but I'm assuming most of you have not seen that or didn't even know it existed. So, we're gonna pretend like it never happened. But we have this thing already, it's a little dirty. The other flask I have is pretty much brand new, it's really clear, and so we're gonna go with that one. So I'm just gonna transfer the bio balls out of the old one and into this new one. The other thing that's kinda cool about this new one is that the hole where the beaker is broken it is a lot smaller, so I don't think we need to have this little pad here that act as a um, basically a gate for the balls so they didn't all spill out. I don't think we're gonna have that problem here. And then if we wanna add a little bit more filtration, mechanical filtration, then we could just stuff some stuff in there, but we won't worry about that for now. This whole thing has to be run by a pump because we need to pump water up out of the aquarium and down into the trickle filter. So to do that, we have a couple different pumps here. I'm not sure which one is gonna work best, but we're gonna go ahead and play around and see what flow rate is gonna be the best thing for this. The pump is just attached to some random tube that we're probably gonna have to cut, but it goes into the top of the filter. I have a little bit of filter pad that kinda cushions it and holds it into place. The end of that tube goes into a plastic vial that we're gonna reuse for this one. It just has holes drilled in it. That way the water gets pumped up into it and then kind of sprinkles out around the top of the filter. And then it's just gonna rain down throughout the bio balls, be super oxygenated water, perfect for nitrification, and make its way out the bottom of the flask. Let's fire this thing up and see what happens. 
Oh yeah, okay, so that works. That's pretty much perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. And it's what I remember from the last one. You can see it's kind of doing some weird stuff down here at the bottom. This is probably a little bit, it's almost perfect. I would say I'd keep the water level as high as possible just because I don't like to hear that trickle all the time and we're certainly gonna hear some trickle up here probably no matter what. We wanna do a quick zoom around and make sure that there isn't any water that's wicking and then making its way onto the tank and dripping down. I remember that from the last time I did this and it's not good, we don't want water on our floor. Everything looks good up here. You know, it's not the most secure thing in the world but I pushed the tubing down pretty far to where you can almost just barely see it there. So, so we shouldn't have any water squirting up out of the top. And yeah, we could put a few more bio balls in here, but I kind of like that we can see this part of it. Flow rate seems to be perfect with that 100 gallon per hour Eco Plus pump. So I don't think we're gonna switch for the other one that we had. I think this is pretty much good to go. But there's of course some other components to this whole thing. So we still have the like fertilizer tank and then the CO2 as well. Filter's been running for about 24 hours now. Last night, before we shut everything down in here, I took out some Fritz Turbo Start, wanted to get a little bit of the nitrification jump started on this tank, and I also plugged up the outflow of the flask with some filter floss to catch some of the debris because the tank was looking a little particulately. Not the clearest water, we wanted to improve on that, so that's what we did to do that. Now, to get this out, if I just pull it out, it's gonna kinda get crazy and put all that back in the tank, or at least a big portion of it, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off, let it drain down, then slowly pull that out, and then we should be good to go. We also still have to hook up our CO2 system to the aquarium. I don't think we're gonna do that in today's video, just because I'm a little tight on time here, and because I don't have any food coloring that I wanna add to the bubble checker, to add an extra little flair to it. So we'll probably just throw that on to a future video, just kind of a recap once we get this thing all done. I also, you know, with the tank set up the way it is now, isn't really gonna be demanding CO2. We have pretty much all low-tech plants in here. So I don't think we really need to set up CO2 in this aquarium until we do a proper rescape on this, maybe with some high demanding stem plants and just totally overhaul the whole thing. Regarding the tank that we have on the back here, I decided that we should probably just use it as a way to fill up with evaporation because this thing is really hard to fine adjust to get the appropriate drop. I mean, I guess if we really wanted to, we could fill it with fertilizer and then measure out, find out you know, how much volume each drop is and that way we could do it. But I just think that it's probably not gonna work out best in the long run. So this will just serve as a way to top the tank up. Of course, that is not in place of water changes, but it is something that's I think just kind of fun. Adds another layer to the whole thing and I'm into it. As much as I do like having kind of a minimalistic pendant style light on here, I think it would be cool to basically just take this clamp, tilt it 90 degrees, and then figure out how to get this light up on there. This is the original twin star that was on the tank. That way, like I said earlier in the video, we can think about what we wanna to do to the surrounding area here. We could put some more plants and just cast a much bigger light beam in this general area. I think that would just be cool and add another layer to the whole system. So there are some drawbacks to the system that we have set up here that I wanna figure out eventually, and that is mostly the mechanical filtration on this thing. It doesn't really have any. The pump down here, of course, there's one point here at which we collect bigger materials, but all the fine stuff still makes its way into the system, and a workaround for that is obviously adding some mechanical filtration up here to catch it before it hits the bio balls. That would be more of a traditional way of filtration. Um, the catching point down here that we did overnight, it's not the best way to do it, but I'm just thinking of ease of use here, like turning off the pump, pulling this out, isn't that much work, but it is work. I think it might also look cool too. Like this is very much a vanity project. You have to keep in mind. So I think that if we had a little layer of filter floss and some Purigen, it might look cool and do exactly what we need it to do. And yes, this is massive overkill as far as filtration goes for this small like 15 gallon aquarium. These bio balls will probably not get fully saturated with nitrifying bacteria because the ammonia load in this aquarium is never gonna be high enough to demand that. And yes, it is gonna get kind of gummed up and probably get some algae growth on it and it's not gonna look very pretty in maybe even a few weeks, but I still think it's gonna look pretty cool overall. Trickle filters are one of the best types of biological filtration because of the increased oxygen. 
Oxygen is of course a limiting factor in nitrification. Without it, the bacteria can't convert the ammonia to nitrite and the nitrite to nitrate. Overall, this is just a really fun project for me and it's something that I love to be sitting at my computer, look over and just see it working. You can kind of hear it working. It's not a super annoying amount of noise. And at the end of the day, this is just me. And I think it's really cool. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope this maybe inspired you to get some ideas of your own as far as kind of creative ways for filtration goes. In one of the next videos, we'll kind of wrap this up and get it finalized. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks once again for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.